Time now for your winners and losers from week number 11. It was finally great to see a couple of guys in Jacksonville step up against the Titans. Trevor Lawrence, he's been a miserable fantasy quarterback all season long. Calvin really has been up and down, but those two connected and connected in a big way as the Jaguars had a huge victory over the Titans. Four total touchdowns for Trevor Lawrence. Two of those going to Calvin Ridley, and they were two of our biggest winners, along with Saquon Barkley at the running back position and George Kittle at tight end. And we'll give you some other winners and losers that hopefully helped your fantasy team in a week that was riddled with injuries. And let's get to that right now. I'm Jamie Eisenberg. That's Heath Cummings. I'll start with my winners, Heath. And another quarterback that stepped up in a big way was our start of the week, Brock Purdy, coming through with a huge performance. The number two quarterback on the week so far behind Trevor Lawrence, but a great performance from him. Devin Singletary coming through once again. DJ Moore getting his quarterback back and looking like the star receiver we saw early in the year when Justin Fields was healthy. And then David Njoku, 15 targets. Dorian Thompson-Robinson loves looking for David Njoku. We'll see if Joe Flacco does the same thing if Flacco takes over. But DTR to Njoku is a great connection that fantasy managers can look at. But let's get a little bit more into Devin Singletary for back-to-back -back weeks now. He's been a must-start fantasy running back, and I think that'll be the case even when Damian Pierce comes back. We know that he was the starter early in the year, but Pierce now missing the last two games with that ankle injury, three games now with an ankle injury. And Singletary has certainly taken advantage of the Bengals two games ago and then beating up on the Cardinals last week. Tougher matchup in week 12 against the Jaguars, but the way he's running right now, Heath, you're starting Singletary and you're starting him with confidence. What about your winners this week? Yeah, it's got to start with Trevor Lawrence. Just when we thought we were out, you pull us back in. Four touchdown performance right back into that top 12 consideration every week as a possible starter. And we saw the upside. We can believe again for a few more weeks. Adam Thielen gets Frank Reich back calling plays. Adam Thielen goes back to dominating targets for the Panthers. 15 fantasy points without a touchdown. We'll take that. George Kittle no longer looks like the odd man out when everyone's healthy. That might be Debo Samuel. Kittle looks more like a top five tight end than anything else but the big winner for me brian robinson a couple of fantastic weeks in a row now 13 targets in his last two games some of that had to do with the fact that antonio gibson was out gibson had had five targets in three straight games but also robinson's just been incredible as a pass catcher 9.5 yards per target 11.6 yards per reception both of those are elite had 24 touches in this game i view him as a top 12 running back at least until gibson's back and maybe even after that yeah, it might be a top five guy based on how he's going. So great to see Brian Robinson stepping up with Gibson dealing with that injury. Let's go to some losers now and a couple of guys that were uh, disappointing for fantasy managers. Look, Matthew Stafford, man, the guy just has no luck. He gets finally healthy, comes back on the field thinking, here's Cooper Cup, here's Puka Nakua. And then all of a sudden, Cooper Cup goes down right as the schedule starting to get very nice for Stafford. So hopefully Cooper's ankle injury will be okay and he can play in week 12 against the Cardinals. Uh, Deontay Johnson, I don't know what's going on with Pittsburgh. You obviously hear Najee Harris very upset. Johnson's targets the last two weeks have absolutely cratered. We used to hang our hat on the fact that he was going to get a lot of targets and hopefully a lot of volume. That just has not been the case right now as Kenny Pickett continues to struggle. And then Evan Ingram and Derrick Henry, kind of a theme with these two guys, coming off disappointing performances in their head-to-head -head matchup. I think both guys are going to bounce back in a big way for Ingram, taking on a tight Texans defense that really struggles against tight ends heading into week number 12. So I have no worries about his down games the last two weeks. Henry's been very frustrating for a lot of fantasy managers, but here comes the best matchup on the table that you can ask for. Taking on the Carolina Panthers in Week 12, they just helped Tony Pollard have a great game. So I think Henry's going to bounce back. It might be the last time we see Derrick Henry with a huge performance, maybe in the Titans uniform, but you should feel, feel confident in starting Henry in Week 12 again because Carolina, most touchdowns allowed to running backs this season, number two in most fantasy points allowed to the position. Derrick Henry's going to bounce back and bounce back in a big way in Week 12, but seriously a huge loser in Week number 11. Yeah, Sam Hill had 19 fantasy points, so I guess maybe not a terrible day in terms of fantasy production, but you can't throw three interceptions and lose to the New York Giants when they're starting Tommy DeVito. This gives me serious concerns about calling Hal a must-start quarterback rest of season and about whether he's a starting quarterback next year. You see two Jets on the list, Garrett Wilson and Tyler Conklin. Is it a bad sign that their Week 12 opponent, the Miami Dolphins, have two different players who have scored as many touchdowns as the Jets' offense this season? Yes, it's absolutely a terrible sign that offense is miserable. And then Josh Jacobs, my big loser. You see the rushing production, the inefficiency. We've kind of dealt with that for most of the season. And it's okay when Jacobs is seeing a huge number of carries and when he's involved in the passing game. But since Aiden O'Connell has taken back over as the starting quarterback, there has been almost no role for Jacobs in the passing game. Just three targets in his last three games combined. He's a low-end number two running back who might be even worse in full PPR than he is in none. Yeah, just frustrating to see the way that he performed, and certainly Garrett Wilson as well with the lack of targets 
who knows who the quarterback is going to be for the Jets moving forward. All right, let's take a look at some waiver wire options, Heath, as we help fantasy managers getting ready for the stretch run of the playoffs, certainly trying to replace a lot of injured guys in week 12. And you'll see two members of the Baltimore Ravens on this list because we know they're missing a key piece of their offense moving forward without Mark Andrews. So Odell Beckham coming off a 100-yard game. Isaiah likely has been the backup tight end for Mark Andrews. Now, prior to this year, it was basically plug and play. Anytime Andrews missing any time, you say Isaiah likely is going to step up. But we know the receiving core much better for the Ravens. The offense not necessarily catered to featuring the tight end, not named Mark Andrews. So tread lightly with Isaiah Likely. But however, you want to pick him up just in case there is a change in the offense because Andrews not coming back. Jaden Reed looks like the best wide receiver for the Packers moving forward. You must add him at this point. Demario Douglas, I don't care who the quarterback is for New England in Week 12. I'd like to see Bailey Zappi. But I think Douglas is going to be heavily involved. And then you see Rashid Shahid on this list. Also take a look in deeper leagues at A.T. Perry. Michael Thomas not going to play coming back from Week 12, dealing with a knee injury. We could see these two other guys not named Chris Olave step up for Derek Carr and a great matchup against the Falcons in Week 12. It was hard to find a streaming quarterback in Week 11. It's a little bit easier in Week 12 with Derek Carr and Gardner Minshew coming off a bye. Both of them have fantastic matchups. Carr against the Falcons, Minshew against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I slightly prefer Gardner Minshew, but they are both good options if you are desperate at quarterback this week and you're going to have to be desperate at running back to be consider using jeff wilson or roshan johnson but i do think both should be added we'll see how serious the injuries are to the dolphins running backs but a realistic chance that on friday we see it's just raheem mostert and jeff wilson as the two healthy running backs for the dolphins and in that case wilson's probably a decent flex option we had a lot of hope for what johnson was going to do he hasn't gotten going yet but if it's him and khalil herbert again then maybe johnson's role in the passing game reemerges. And just one thing to note, when we talk about waivers, we usually look at players rostered in less than 65% of leagues. If Zach Charbonnet or A.J. Dillon are on your waiver wire, they are must-ads and the two biggest priorities because of injuries to Ken Walker and to Aaron Jones. So make sure that Dillon and Charbonnet are not available. If they are, go grab them immediately. All right, he's got a big game tonight between the Chiefs and Eagles. Super Bowl rematch. Let's give everybody some fan duel lineups. I'll go first. My MVP, probably the NFL MVP, certainly the MVP last year, Patrick Holmes. Down season so far for him, what the expectations are. But the Eagles bleed fantasy points to opposing quarterbacks. It's the worst pass defense in terms of fantasy points allowed to the positions. Mahomes coming off a bye should get going, and hopefully Travis Kelsey will as well. Chief option at wide receiver for me is going to be Justin Watson. He's picked up his play a little bit of late. Obviously, this receiving core is miserable, but I think Watson has a chance to make some plays tonight. I'm going to stick with A.J. Brown. I don't love the matchup, but I still think he's matchup proof. So I'm going to keep him in the lineup. And then we know there's a tight end opening without Dallas Goddard there. Could be Jack Stoll, could be Alberto. Uh, Stoll's going to get the first opportunity, so I'm going to throw him in the lineup and just hope that he takes advantage of Goddard not being there. I agree with you on the Mahomes-Kelsey stack. I think everybody's going to have that. I'm okay with it. I'll play it anyway. I was able to slide Jalen Hurts into my lineup as well by playing Jarek McKinnon at 6,500. I have no idea why he's that cheap, but this is the time of year when he gets going, especially with the way the way the Chiefs of wide receivers have played. I expect a big role for him tonight, and then I'll take the other tight end. He's $500 less. Alberto, get in the end zone for me. Uh, could be fun to see these tight ends stepping up without Goddard there and Jalen Hurts hopefully leaning on them. That will help you with the Eagles quarterback in your lineup. All right, it should be a fun game tonight. And make sure you check out everything that we have on our Fantasy Football Today podcast. We help you dominate your fantasy leagues. It's getting to that point in the season where you need every little bit of information, and we have you covered. Again, the Fantasy Football Today podcast, wherever podcasts are found. <laughs> 